This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room in Chicago, where we are at the 2012 Multidisciplinary Symposium in Thoracic Oncology, which is brought to you by ASTRO, IASLC, ASCO, and the University of Chicago. Joining me now is Kimberly Rohan, an advanced practice nurse and oncology clinical nurse uh, in, at the Edward Cancer Center in Naperville, Illinois. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. <laughs> what role does the oncology nurse have in helping to navigate patients through this new way in which we're dealing with cancer diagnostically and also in choosing therapies for patients? I think the challenge is um, being able to explain to patients what we're doing and why we're doing it and why we're sending their tumor specimen off for testing and they can't start treatment or they may choose to delay treatment for a couple weeks while we're waiting for those results because it could make a difference between taking intravenous chemotherapy and oral chemotherapy, which for the majority of the patients, taking a pill every day sounds much more palatable than getting stuck with IVs and having IV chemotherapy. So I think um, the challenge is really being able to explain to patients what genomics is why it's important to their care and how we're going to use that information. And sometimes that information isn't even, even as important initially, but going down the line um, future, uh, looking at second line therapies or third line therapies. Take us through the dialogue when you try to explain to a patient what is biomarker testing and why it's important in lung cancer care? Typically when we, I sit down with the patient and family, the physicians kind of laid the groundwork. I work in joint practice with Dr. Maria Quejada. We run a multidisciplinary thoracic oncology clinic. Um, so I'm the navigator for all the patients. So um, when I sit down with the patients and families initially, explaining to them that we're sending off a piece of their tissue, it's being sent to a lab, where we, at least now, and I know um, just coming from one of the topics and talking about genomics, you know, should we do, be doing sequential testing or should we be doing, you know, the whole panel of testing? Um, right now we do sequen sequential testing. Explain what that means, please. So sequential testing is where you send the specimen off and you look at what, what is the most likely mutation that the patient would have. And right now we, you know, the majority of them are EGFR. So we send, explain to the patient, we're sending them off to see, sending their tissue off to see if they have an EGFR, an epith epithelial growth hormone refractory um, mutation, that then if they do have this mutation, they would be a candidate for a lot number Tarceva therapy, which is a pill. So if you were going to sort of encapsulate what you just said into what does the patient diagnosed with lung cancer really need to know regarding biomarker testing, mm -hmm. how would you respond to that question? I think for patients it's personalizing care. It's personalizing lung cancer treatment. Um, it's not all lung cancer patients are going to get treatment A because you have lung cancer. Now we have the ability to say, you know what, maybe treatment A isn't the best treatment for you. Maybe it's this pill that's the best treatment for you. So I think it's um, personalizing our approach to care. Uh, much as we have been able to do for a long time in breast cancer, we're now starting to be able to do that in lung cancer. What about retesting? At what point along the way does that issue present? We do retesting, um, we, a perfect example, we had oh, actually a patient recently who was on the original ERISA trial um, and has been maintained on Traceva for nine years and developed a, a new nodule in the lung. Now that one we retested because it, uh, is it A, the same tumor, B, um, he did have EGFR, does he still, has the tumor morphology changed? Um, so oftentimes when you're concerned that a patient has become resistant or this is a new tumor um, or a completely different um, histology or whatever, we will retest at that time. What about obstacles? What do you face or what do you feel are the greatest 
challenges and obstacles in the testing process? I think getting it done quickly. Um, I think, you know, getting the, the testing back in a, t in a timely manner. I, I still think that um, having enough tissue to do all the testing sometimes that we want to do. Um, lung biopsies tend to be very, it's not a big, unlike breast, it's not a big hunk of tissue that you have to work with. So strategizing, you know, what, what, what test is going to give us the most answer, the most bang for our buck. Um, so I think that that part is um, challenging. Um, I think cost is always a factor. What can the advocate community do to support your clinical efforts? Smoking cessation programs, working in that, uh, advocating for that. Um, I think that in treatment and when we're talking about personalized medicine and that it's educating patients on why we do these tests, what it means for them, not only for their care, but the care of their loved ones. But also, like I said, we've got to educate the payers. We've got to educate our legislators, um, you know, so that there is coverage for for these things, um, you know, especially even our Medicare patients, ensuring the majority of lung cancer patients are older, they fall under Medicare, and it's really in making sure the government and CMS understands the importance of this so that they're willing to reimburse. Um, typically, um, you know, payers go by way of CMS. So if we can educate them on the importance and why we need to do this and what it means for patients clinically and for their quality of life, I think that will go a long way. Thank you very, very much. Kimberly Rohan, Advanced Practice Nurse and Oncology Clinical Nurse at the Edward Cancer Center, Naperville, Illinois. Thank you. Pleasure.